Um, my question was... Uh, uh, I'm rolling. Yes. Yeah. In, uh, in most of your travels, sometimes you might encounter situations which you don't have control over. In the sense, uh, you see a custom or a tradition which you personally don't like. Yes. Does that ever bother you that, uh, you know, does that ever stop you from traveling to a place where you think that I'll meet, uh, see something which I'm not going to like and you have no influence over it? Yeah, I think it does. I, 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 I mean, in all honesty, I only go to the places that I really like. Okay. It's, it's a fact. Uh, when I was a journalist, it was not the case. Um, I went to a lot of places that I didn't feel comfortable. <coughs> but when, uh, that's part of the reason I got out of journalism, I think, because I think also many media outlets have an unhealthy obsession with those kind of places. I mean, that's controversy, you know, violence, destruction, all that kind of stuff. And I, I just decided that actually you know, I could make that choice. There was nothing. There was nothing wrong with deciding to just go to the place you liked to be. And in fact, as a photographer, that gave you the opportunity to be quite inspirational because you were shooting stuff that you loved and believed in. And I think it comes across. Uh, you know, I'm I'm quite content that there are plenty of photographers out there shooting the complete opposite of me, I, of what I do. And I'm, I'm cool with that. I've chosen my path and, and I believe in it. I believe in inspiring people through photography and through images and, uh, and making people feel quite good. You know, I don't, honestly don't want to go somewhere where I'm not welcome because I'm not looking for that emotion in my, in my images. I'm looking for um, sentiments that are welcoming happy, content, struggles, but, but you, know, you know, just welcoming people, because I believe in that myself. I'm, that's, I believe in welcoming people myself. So if I, if I was to, if I'm creating any kind of propaganda through my photography, it's that. I'm, I want to pass that on. I want to show people that live in a way that I believe in, and also that want me there, um, because a, that is very helpful for your photography, but B, that's the emotion I'm looking for. And um, there's plenty of places around the world where, where that exists. And doing journalist type stuff, I guess, is almost, you put in situations that are almost the opposite of community. It's, you're not there for the community. You're just, you're just there to get a photo regardless of the, what the you know, people you're photographing want. In modern journalism, yeah, I think. In modern journalism, the the constraint, you, the, the 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 kind of the constraints placed upon you are intense. Um, you know, from the simple fact that you get very small amounts of time to cover stories. That's what I noticed throughout my career as a journalist. In the beginning, there was more time to get under the surface of something. Um, by the end, by the time I got out of it, you know, people were being sent on foreign trips for like the weekend because of a budget constraint or whatever, and expected to just you know, tap straight into the story and bring something out. And it goes intrinsically against what I believe in now, which is that the, the story of intimacy, the intimate stories are the stories to tell. And, and you have to give of yourself and your time in order for those kind of stories to unfold in front of you. And even then, um, it's not easy. <laughs> you talked of inspiring people with your photographs. Who are those people that you're? It's fun. It's a good question because I think the old, you know, the me of a few years ago would would have felt quite moral about that and gone, I'm trying to inspire people that the world's a lovely place and, you know, but since I've <laughs> started reaching out to the people that think I'm inspiring, I think I'm mostly inspiring travel photographers <laughs> 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 because um, I'm not sure, like. I've had some very touching um, emails and you know Facebook messages from people who've said that they live vicariously through me, and I think that's nice. I mean, I had a, a, a terminally ill guy say, "Thank you. I never would have seen the world without you taking photos, all this kind of stuff." And I do, I do find it a little bit weird because I, I think. I, I don't know, I, I couldn't, I myself couldn't find solace in, in someone else's travels. I, I, I would find that hard. I would rather, if, I would rather be in my garden, 
tr I travelled to the bottom of the garden t and experienced something than necessarily um, live vicariously through someone else. I think we owe it to ourselves as individually individuals to do something ourselves. And um, I, I think I, I certainly can inspire people to travel and possibly even to feel good about who they are. I mean, when I, when I work with communities, I'm, I, I'm proud of them and I'm proud of their pride. You can see it in, in the people we meet here that they're very proud of who they are and they're, they're happy to share it with you when they understand that you're proud of it too as well. And I don't want to take a bad picture of someone. I don't, I don't want someone to look bad in my pictures. I want to get that essence of their, their, their pride in, in who they are and what they do. And that's what opens a lot of doors, I think, is people understanding that you're someone who's there to tell their story in a way that they're actually going to like. And that's where I travel. I travel to those places where people are happy to tell, tell me their story and trust me. They trust that I'm going to tell it well. And I bring Polaroid cameras and printers and I, I take men and I'm always giving pictures back to people because I'm really proud of the picture. When I take a nice picture of someone, I'm, I, it's good that I like it, but I want them to like it as well. And they inevitably do. And it's, it gives me a, quite a big buzz that side of it. It's, it's what drives a lot of it, I think, a lot of the, you know, the journey. book you had, do you think anyone will be, do you, will any kid be? That's a good thing. That's a really good point, actually. I think you're absolutely true. That's, that's absolutely true. Maybe I'm missing something here because as a kid I did, there, you know, books were huge when we were kids and picture books were my books, really. Um, Certainly, picture books of nature were my things, and there were a couple of books that I still have to this day, big, thick, hardback books, full of pictures of the world. And I would go back to those every other day sometimes, you know, and just go from the beginning of the book to the end of the book, through every single picture, and I knew every single picture, one by one. So it, they must have inspired me. It must have had an effect on me. I don't know who those photographers were. I should probably thank them. <laughs> but. I, 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 I must admit, in, in, right here and right now, I, I'm, I don't connect. I don't make those connections between my photography and the inspiration it has on other for other people, because, you know, like I say, I would love to feel that I was inspiring people to be better people, but I don't think I am. I think I'm inspiring people to like want to travel more. Through travel, I think we all learn about ourselves, you know. The world is just a great big mirror to us. And um, the more you go to a culture that is different from yours, the more the mirror is reflecting back at you. I mean, that's the beauty of travel. You come home and you hopefully know who you are after a long trip or a number of trips. So if I'm inspiring people to travel, then I hope, then I think, good. And I hope that they're enjoying themselves and learning a lot about life. <laughs> what does this, this kind of travel brings you? Well, in all honesty, when I like, I if I look back retrospectively over my life now, I can see that um, all the travels I did um, resulted in me coming home. That's the weird thing. Um, I was looking for something especially in my 20s and 30s, I was looking for something in my travels and I was going to remote spots, looking, I, I was obsessed with remote spots, looking for something. And what I found in those places were very strong communities. And I've ended up returning home and, and finding a community in the mountains in Wales and starting a family and all this kind of stuff. But as a single man, I traveled the world looking for uh, remote spots, not really knowing why, I only now can look back in retrospect and go, yeah, I get it now. You know, I can distinctly remember in, in Tripura in India, I spent like almost a month and a half in a refugee camp, which was like forgotten. It's kind of like forgotten about refugee camp. And there were 40,000 brew tribal people living there who'd been m moved across a border and had nowhere to live. And 
I in I remember one night in in that place re realizing how important a family was. It was like the beginning of me starting to think about settling down because I lived with a family of probably about 10 all in one little house and we all slept on the floor together and it seeped into me, you know what I mean? I kind of realized that having uh, kids was really important. And then I brought that home with me and then I did some more trips and then I came back and more. But what I found in all the remote spots, it's almost like you could plot a graph. The further away you go, the more hospitable people become. So the higher in the mountains or the deeper in the desert. And a cynic would say that's because you need to be, because you have to be, you have to live together and you, you help your neighbor because you never know when you might be helped. But I, I think there's something about the, a remote spot, in the quietness of a remote spot, where you realize you, a few things about life, because there's none of that clutter. And you realize that, you know, being nice is a good thing. You know, you're not necessarily doing it for selfish reasons, but there's certainly a very strong correlation between how remote a place is and I think how hospitable and, and welcoming the people are. And I think intuitively you might think it was, intuitively you might think it was the opposite. You might think if mm -hmm. you turn up in a very remote spot, people are going to be a bit, who are you and why are you here? But actually, it's the opposite. And I've done it because I live in a very remote spot. And every now and then we get people accidentally getting lost riding their horses down our lane. And we, pre we almost invite them in for tea because it's almost like, well, you're here. Cool. Come on in. And it, it's something about remoteness. I don't know what, you know.